Okay, thank you very much. So I will give an overview about uh, the focus area on geodetic space weather research, uh, a status and uh, perspectives I want to uh, uh, discuss with you. So besides uh, me, also my vice chair is an is uh, work, worked on that presentation. So one of the things we uh, made in the last year or the last time was uh, to find the definition of space weather. So space weather is part of, of the title of the focus area, but if you look into the publications, into the literature, into the internet, you will not really find a definition of space weather or an accepted uh, definition of space weather. And there we come up with the idea to make our own definition. And this definition is uh, shown here on that uh, slide where we uh, uh, wrote this uh, the term that the term space weather comprises physically induced dynamic changes in the interplanetary and interstellar space, most of which are of solar origin and specifically affect the near uh, space and the atmosphere down to the Earth's surface. This then combines uh, the, the near, near Earth's space, uh, that means the, the, the space between the sun and the surface of the Earth. So maybe this uh, definition can also put uh, into uh, our websites at the uh, GIGOS uh, um, uh, web, web pages. Um, yeah, let me uh, go back to the um, most important parts of that what we are doing. So we have here on the in this figure on the left hand side the sun and here we have the earth is a geomagnetic field and we are discussing on the one hand side the solar phenomena then the propagation the interactions with the, uh, uh, with the different uh, properties of the earth and then finally we look at the effects. So we have uh, solar phenomena, the radiations, the UV radiations, X-ray radiations, we have solar flares and we have the CV. CMEs. The propagation is either by uh, electromagnetic wave propagation or by particle propagation in, in form of solar wind and solar storm. The interactions with the geomagnetic field and with the ionosphere and the plasma sphere, the thermosphere and also the lower atmosphere are discussed in our focus area and the effects are geomagnetic storms, uh, solar storms and density variations, polar lights and distortions, uh, only to mention a few of them. Uh, then we came up here uh, with this uh, structure. So our uh, focus area was uh, accepted in 2017. So we have now uh, a little bit more than six years. And we could uh, yeah, introduce this scientific structure of the focus area as that double tetrahedron. Uh, which is seen here on the right hand side. So we have uh, the basic comp components this is the magnetosphere, ionosphere, plasma sphere. We uh, put it here into one box and then the thermosphere, and then we see the different coupling mechanisms which have to be considered. And on the other hand, then we have the uh, observations, so the geodetic uh, observations, space geodetic observations, which are here in the bottom part. And we see with these uh, yellow uh, arrows here that. Uh, there are the connections to the different uh, uh, elements of our focus area to so precise orbit determination and the thermosphere we have to consider in precise point positioning, precise navigation, the ionosphere and plasma stream, and also magnetosphere, especially uh, uh, magnetotorque maneuvers. So, and in addition, then we have to consider the solar observations, which are here on the top. So that means then we have the space weather effects, which are uh, somehow in uh, impacting these different uh, components. So that means magnetosphere, ionosphere, plasma sphere, and thermosphere. And if we do that in this way, we came up with a whole chain of physical processes between the sun and the Earth's surface, as I mentioned already before. Uh, here again, we see a figure, I showed you that several times, where we have the different missions. So we have the solar surface observations and the uh, solar atmosphere are observed by uh, some of these uh, uh, solar missions, solar satellite missions. We have the stereo missions where the stereo satellites are orbiting uh, sun like the Earth. Uh, and then we have these uh, uh, different missions which are located in the Lagrange point, the ACE mission, Discover, and, and others where the, uh, the solar wind is measured, where also the, geomagnetic, uh, the, the magnetic field is measured. And that means we have a lot of information coming from these solar satellite missions. And when we ask where is now geodesy coming into play, then we have 
on the one side here, because these are now all our space geodetic observation techniques. And on the other hand, we have a lot of different uh, analysis techniques and modeling approaches, was, what, which we also know from other fields in geodesy, which we can use here in the context, for instance, a combination of different observation techniques uh, and also then to, to modeling different uh, parts or different elements of the electron density, for instance, or the vertical total electron content. And then our idea was that we have to do that in the uh, in the focus area in the geodetic uh, uh, environment because we have all the tools for for uh, doing these issues in uh, the the space weather research. So then uh, we have uh, this combined evaluation of the measurements from solar and space geodetic observation techniques. Of course, to do that, this is a big uh, challenge and this is something where many things have to be done. Very different kinds of observations have to be, have to be uh, combined, have to be connected, have to be evaluated together. Uh, however, this is that what we have uh, defined as one of the main objectives. And with these, uh, if we have to reach these goals, we can, uh, 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 calculate, we can uh, develop these uh, different uh, elements of our focus area. Namely, we have improved ionosphere models, we have improved thermosphere models, we look at the different coupling processes, we try to have an improved understanding of space weather events. So uh, that means we have these different key parameters. So one key parameter is the electron density of the ionosphere. And the other one is the neutral density of the thermosphere, which are closely connected to each other uh, by physical coupling processes. Uh, we already discussed uh, that or mentioned that we that we think that these are uh, essential geodetic variables, and that finally GIGOS products can be uh, uh, yeah can be uh, um, developed and can be uh, uh, um, computed uh, as products for the users. So for doing that, we introduced uh, one study group, one joint study group, and three GIGOS joint working groups. Uh, here we have the names and some information about these groups. The first one is the joint study group one, coupling processes between magnetosphere, thermosphere, and ionosphere. Uh, it is implemented in the ICCT program of the IAG. The chair is Andres Calabria and uh, the vice chair is Mundabar Shah. We have uh, a number of 17 group members. The second group is the electron density modeling, which is led by Fabrizio Prohl from Finland and Alberto Garcia Rigo is the vice chair. Here we have 18 group members. The next group is an improvement of the thermosphere models, uh, which is chaired by Christian Siemens and vice chair is Christine Fielberg. We have nine group members. Now there will be a change, a change uh, with respect to the chair and the vice chair. We already have uh, the new people and we will appoint them very, very soon. So but I do not want to do that now here because we need our last uh, negotiations have to be performed. Finally, we have the, the last working group three, which is the improved understanding of space weather events and the monitoring by satellite missions. This is led by Haishai Ligo and the vice chair is Benedict Soya and you have uh, 11 group members. So let's look a little bit closer to that. Uh, this is uh, joint study group number one again. As I mentioned, we have here a list of objectives. I do not want to go into many details here because after my talk, there will be a talk of Andres Calabria. He will give more information about that. So therefore, I will do that here rather short and want to mention here a website where you could then also get more information about that. And uh, finally, I want to say that a lot of projects have been done here, a lot of papers have been written, articles in different journals. And again, as I said, there will be this talk, recent advances and prospects of the JSG1 after my presentation. Let's then go to the next uh, group. This is the joint working group number one, electron density modeling. Uh, the objectives uh, are listed here. So that means a database uh, should be uh, developed, uh, yeah, should be developed, which can then be used for the evaluation of 3D electron density models. That means uh, it would be uh, the idea of this uh, first objective to look behind these electron density models. What are the observations, GNSN, uh, GNSS, then we have radio occultation measurements, storage data and altimeter data and other data. That means these uh, different 3D electron density models 
have been evaluated and could be then used by, by the members of the group. Uh, uh, 3D electron density estimations. How is this done? That means which procedures are behind. This is the second point here. Uh, it should be then provided. Uh, then uh, the products generated, uh, the generated products indicating space weather conditions and expected errors. So which errors can be then considered if we have to if we analyze these these models? And finally, uh, there is an objective where uh, re-adaptations will be identified to improve the products. That means the idea is, of course, to pre to uh, improve the, the products. The next slide now shows what was done in the last year, so from 2019 to 21. 2021, this database has been established, what I mentioned before. Uh, then in uh, 21 to 23, Developments and evaluations have been performed. Uh, some campaigns have been created uh, using different selected geomagnetic storms. So a list of storms was done, and then uh, these uh, these electron density models have been evaluated. Uh, different uh, activities are listed here. I do not want to uh, go through all that. Uh, what is done, of course, are direct comparisons between different models, then cross validations, and also uh, a tomography model was developed by Fabrizio. And finally, here the last issue is that there was a lack uh, of a correct description when we switch between the ionosphere and plasma sphere. So that means a lot of work uh, needs to be done on this. Uh, topic, so the combination of ionosphere and plasma sphere uh, above the two uh, F2 layer peak. And uh, now in the last time, many uh, projects and, uh, and also papers have been uh, found and, uh, and published about these topics. So that is something what is in the focus in this uh, uh, um, electron density modeling approach where uh, ionosphere and plasma sphere have to be combined. So I come to the next working group. This is the improvement of thermosphere models. So objective is uh, uh, providing relevant space uh, geodetic observations. That means which which observations can be used now for uh, a thermosphere modeling uh, creation or an improvement of the thermosphere models. For instance, we can use accelerometer uh, data. We can also use uh, uh, satellite laser ranging data, GPS. So there are a lot of possibilities. Uh, then uh, uh, the observational database was established in this uh, because we have actually a long time span of about 20 years and that can be also used to study the climatology. So that means we have then uh, some input also to climate change studies from the thermosphere. Activities uh, are related uh, mostly in this group uh, right now related to accelerometer data. Here we see a flowchart how this is performed, how the acceleration data, accelerometry data is calibrated by uh, GNSS. Then we have uh, this aerodynamic accelera acceleration, which can be used for the computation of the thermospheric density. This is that here in the last uh, topic, and this is one issue where this group worked on very intensively. Uh, this uh, document was uh, 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 um, created where the different models which are used by different uh, centers, so the centers are here in the third uh, uh, bullet uh, listed. So we have the Technical University of Graz, we have the University of Bonn at UD Delft, and uh, we have uh, the Zarm uh, of the uh, University of Bremen and also a few others, which contributed uh, to this uh, uh, working group and then setting up uh, uh, the, the modeling approaches and also contributed uh, their data sets. So they uh, can be used as a key result of the comparison and neutral density observation so scale differences. So there are differences. This is what uh, needs to be discussed. Where are these this, uh, differences coming from? And uh, so these uh, are in all processing steps. This was one of the results of these investigations. And uh, then the aerodynamic force uh, coefficient modeling. This is one of the biggest challenges. Uh, uh, how can we done that? Uh, how can we compute uh, GSI models? So uh, that means there is a big, big, uh, big uh, number of uh, issues which have to be solved. One of these is also how uh, the geometry of the satellites has to be considered. 
So the last uh, working group is improved understanding of space weather events and their monitoring by satellite missions. Here, uh, the identification of key parameters is in the foreground, uh, especially in case of extreme solar weather conditions, uh, a better understanding should then be the consequence of that. And uh, there was uh, in the activities an online survey done at the beginning, so for a better understanding of the complementarity of, within the team. So, and then some historical space weather events have been selected. That is then also related to the other working groups, especially to the working group number one. I told you that there are also four storm periods have been used. So here you see these uh, corresponding years. And for monitoring and uh, uh, forecasting, then also uh, real-time or near real-time data are important. And this is also some one issue for the next uh, time. So coming to the objectives and the structure of the focus area again, now I want to do it in a little bit different way. I have here uh, one, uh, let's say two parts in that, uh, that uh, flowchart. On the one hand side, we start here with the space geodetic observations to compute ionosphere and plasma sphere models. So then we could take uh, that for VTEC, so vertical total electron content computations and electron density computation. They are connected to each other uh, by integration. On the right hand side, now I have uh, precise orbit determination. So, as I mentioned, satellite laser uh, ranging, accelerometry, uh, DORES, and so on, which can be used for modeling the thermosphere, especially the thermospheric density. And then we have here the neutral density. So, in addition, we have the solar observation. I told you, ACE discover stereo, and so on. And all that is then uh, connected by thermosphere and atmosphere coupling models. So, that could be empirical, that could be physically. Uh, TIE GCM, for instance, is an example for physical mon uh, model NLMs uh, for empirical model. So, and then we bring all our observations into these models so on the one hand side and in the modeling of the ionosphere and plasma sphere itself. So, as we co combine that with our observations, and then here on the right hand side in a similar way. But also, these solar observations are directly included into the thermosphere. Ionosphere coupling models that could be done by, by a simulation, for instance. Um, and then there is also a back coupling to the modeling. Uh, the magnetosphere is behind, so therefore I have here that blue box in, in the background. So that means the magnetosphere is everywhere considered. And then finally, uh, we could introduce here these Trigos products uh, I already mentioned, namely these three, uh, electron density, neutral density, and then also the vertical total electron content. And if we now place these uh, four different uh, groups, then we could say here we have the joint uh, stu uh, study group number one, where magnetosphere, thermosphere, and ionosphere are connected and combined by the coupling processes. Here we have the joint working group number one, electron density modeling on the left hand side, on the right hand side, then the improvement of the thermosphere models. And finally, then we have here the joint working group number three, improved understanding of space weather events and the monitoring by satellite missions. So this is the situation right now. And uh, here I have from the GIGOS websites these uh, products. This is a map here of the vertical total electron content. You can find that in, in the uh, website. This is here the electron density. And finally, we have then here the thermosphere just uh, in order to show you uh, how these products look like. So let's go then to the activities for, the, for that what we want to do from now on. So as I said, we have these four study groups. Uh, three working groups and one uh, uh, study group. And they worked uh, successfully on different scientific pieces. And as I uh, sh showed you shortly in, in the, on the slides before. But now uh, we want to combine that. That means from that uh, figure what I showed you before, the groups uh, uh, in our structure, we have now to combine this work. And uh, that should be done in the next uh, four years. So that means that the results from the previous four years should now be linked uh, and, for instance, to study these coupling processes and combination of solar and space geodetic observations, what I mentioned at the beginning, how that can be done in an appropriate way, and then also the comparison or the inclusion of that into physical models uh, such as TIE GCM. And then we have a better understanding of the whole chain of physical processes, as we said, between the sun and the surface of the Earth. 
And uh, if we look at that, what we uh, want to do in the next years uh, means, again, I need to say simulation studies uh, are necessary to do that uh, in, an, in an appropriate way. So to have the first ideas, the first uh, run, the first results. And uh, then uh, we have the development of ionosphere and thermosphere models as, as stated uh, as products. So that maybe in a routinely way, this is uh, something maybe for the end of this uh, four years period, and also recommendations for applications of the models uh, should be uh, done for, for precise orbit determination. For instance, collision avoidance is a very important topic. And uh, then space debris analysis, re computations, and so on. So what do we want to do uh, in, in more detail in the next uh, years? So uh, we plan to extend the investigation area uh, also from the upper atmosphere. So what we did so far, what I showed you on the previous slide, but uh, we also want to go a little bit, uh, 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 integrated analysis is mentioned here, coupling processes, and this is what I said before, but now we want to, want to switch a little bit to vertical coupling processes. Uh, there will be later today a presentation from uh, Harald Chu uh, on a new uh, planned focus area on the tropospheric studies. So that could be a good uh, way to bring vertical coupling into play. Uh, we think here, especially on, on gravity waves, which are maybe coming from uh, tsunamis and, 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 and other, other sources, uh, which are then uh, vertical coupling processes. Uh, we can also think about the climate change effects, what I already mentioned when we look at the thermosphere. How can we combine that with the lower atmosphere? Uh, this is something what can be done. Then other plant activities, uh, a special issue uh, in a in a uh, journal shall be uh, set up so to disseminate the results of the focus area. Then we want to plan a workshop to promote the contributions of theoretic techniques for better understanding. That can be done maybe uh, next week, uh, next, not that week, next year or in the, in the, in the next years. So and then I also saw this nice film uh, or these nice films in in Gigos. So and then I came to that idea: why not also setting up a Gigos film on the contribution of geodesy to space weather monitoring and forecasting that would then show how we can use our geodetic observation techniques that what we uh, all uh, create in geodesy, what we have in geodesy to look at these uh, you know, specific problems like space weather monitoring, forecasting, how can these uh, uh, space weather events make be make, uh, done visible uh, to the community. So that could be a nice contribution to see that the geodesy can also uh, have a lot of contributions to other fields, uh, for example, the space value. Uh, then uh, the terms of reference needs to be updated uh, and uh, new objectives have to be formulated. Uh, planned activities is something what we want to do in the next time. Therefore, a splinter meeting uh, will be set up and these uh, uh, topics I mentioned before uh, will be discussed in detail, will be then uh, finally uh, formulated, and uh, it should be uh, at the end of October, I guess, maybe also in November, depends when this is necessary. So uh, then uh, activities for the period. Uh, so we also, this is what I already mentioned in our last uh, uh, meeting, I think in, in April, uh, that we uh, are planning to have a closer cooperation with the Yaga Association. Uh, we had some first discussions at the second IG Commission for Symposium in Potsdam uh, last year in September. Then we continued uh, these uh, discussions uh, in, at the IUGG uh, meeting in Berlin in July. I uh, talked with Laura Lefebvre. She is from uh, ROP in, in Brussels, and she is the head of the Interdivisional Commission on Space Weather at Yaga. And we are planning to have a joint association study group within the IUGG. Uh, there are examples that this can be created, and we, were, yeah, we want to go on with this idea. Uh, but it needs some time. Uh, we need to uh, formulate the terms of references, list of objectives, some group members, and so on. And then uh, we want to have an additional uh, study group. In this case, it is that this joint inter-association study group on space value. It should combine activities of IG and Yaga. 
Uh, one of the first goals should be the development of a roadmap for the establishment of an international space weather data center uh, and space weather services and that all for scientific purposes, not uh, as warning systems for the public. This is uh, something what needs to be done by the maybe governments of different countries uh, and we are looking here on the sciences. So then uh, at the end, I'm more or less at the end, I want to show you this slide. This is a slide I showed you, uh, yeah, I think in April 2017, when I uh, asked for and accept the acceptance of our uh, focus area. And we see here the different parts again from right to left. We come up from the surface of the Earth, then to the uh, magnetosphere. And we have all these combinations, all these influences, all that what the sun is impacting on the one inside magnetic field and also the charged gas and the neutral gas, how they are uh, impacted by the sun. And uh, what we can then uh, try to, what we are planning to do is uh, on the one side to have some collaboration with the uh, uh, GIGOS focus area uh, AI for G, so artificial intelligence for geodesy, which is chaired by Benedict Soya to, to make uh, something together in the ionosphere prediction, for example. So this is uh, something what we are planning for the next time too. Then also that what I already mentioned, this uh, connection with Yaga, uh, so this inter-association joint study group. Then we also uh, also mentioned already this uh, collaboration with the proposed focus area uh, combined uh, tropospheric products, which is led by Harald Chu and Rosa Passione and uh, and uh, um, yeah, uh, Kuriakos Berliaris, so this is uh, his name. And finally also uh, what I mentioned, looking at the climate, changes so that we have, if we look at the thermosphere uh, uh, time series, that we also can uh, have some input on climate change investigations. And there we want to collaborate with the Intercommission Committee on Climate Change, which is led by Aneta Eiger. So last slide is an overview about the, the conferences uh, we had in the last year. So that first one is the G5.1 session at the EGU in 2023. We had 11 uh, PICO presentations in, in a PICO session. Then we had uh, this uh, uh, G03 symposium at the 28th General Assembly of the IUG in Berlin. Uh, there we had seven oral sessions. This was, I think, a big success of 90 minutes. Uh, and uh, the symposium was a joint symposium where also Yaga and Yamas and Yap Yapkai have been involved. And then last is here the issue that we again will have uh, uh, Ionosphere, Thermosphere, Space Weather uh, session at the next EGU 2024 in uh, Vienna. And this is set up in a similar way as we did in the last year, uh, but uh, I will then not be uh, the uh, co convener anymore. So that means this uh, session will then let again by Isan, and we have uh, three or four other co conveners So then I would stop here with my presentation.